All right, Big Mac, today is Wednesday, January 6th. Welcome to the Dog Walk presented by Barstool Sports. Presented by Barstool Sports. I don't know what I did there. Um, Chief, you're here again. How are we doing? I feel great. Three days in a row. That's how we'd like to do it. Start the week off strong. Love doing dog walks, so we're back for uh, another topic. It is three days in a row. Mm-hmm. I didn't realize that. Yeah. So, we talked about this before break, I believe, about the Amish. Yeah, we touched on it. It was like on a part of a different show, which I can't really remember, but I was like, I don't know shit about the Amish, really, but they're fascinating to me. So, we decided to do a little bit of a deep dive. Big time fascinating. So, mm-hmm. yeah, that's what today's going to be about. We're talking about the Amish. Before we hop into it, though, Chief, we do have to talk about Roman. Okay. Roman swipes. Roman swipes. What do you got to say about him? What do you like about him? I love the Roman swipes because, you know, you just, there's nothing more embarrassing than being like that scene in uh, Wolf of Wall Street where you just, you just come too fast. You just come too fast and like the night's over. You can't have that. And now Roman steps in and uh, helps you with, with that problem so that you just open it, comes in discreet packaging, wipe it on, let it dry. You're good to go. Let them know that, you know, it's pound town tonight. Yeah, there you go. Roman swipes are clinically proven as a way to last longer in bed. They're effective, easy to use, and fast acting, but they don't require a prescription. Roman can ship the swipes to you in discreet, unmarked packaging, and each swipe packet is small enough to hide in your wallet for whenever you need it. They're super easy to use. Just take the swipe out of the packet, swipe it on, let it dry, and you're good to go. That's it. So to get your hands on these, all you got to do is go to GetRoman.com slash dogwalk. And you can get your first month of swipes for just $5 when you choose a monthly plan. That's GetRoman.com slash dogwalk. You guys know the drill by now. Like Chief said, don't do a Wolf of Wall Street. Last longer. Stop the tricks. Go ahead and over to Roman. Mm-hmm. All right. So the Amish, Chief. Here we go. Yeah. And it, I was surprised to learn that I think, based on what I've read, the Amish would be allowed to use Roman swipes. Really? Yeah. So there's just they draw certain lines around certain things, but anything medical, uh, it's kind of from what I heard was to the family's discretion. So they got lots of rules and laws and things like that. But if you need medical assistance to keep your dick up, you can just have some discreet packaging from Roman arrive at your door in Lancaster, PA, or wherever else your Amish community is. That's nice. We should send them a couple of swipes. Yeah, see what they think. Yeah, so, all right, I'm... You want to start at the beginning? Yeah, sure, because okay. that's fascinating, like you said. Yeah, so... As most things in uh, in America, it has roots in Europe. So this, uh, I think we've talked on other podcasts. Maybe it was a Santa Cl- uh, Claus podcast we did a few weeks ago talking about Martin Luther. I believe that is what it is. So they had this Protestant Reformation that went on all across Europe in the, you know, the 1500s. And one of the things to come from that, uh, you know, the, the I think it was his 97 points or something like that from Martin Luther was this movement called Anabaptist. So Anabaptist was... Uh, you know, in Switzerland, uh, Germany, parts of Austria, where you just had these different groups of people being like, hey, like we're starting to think about the way we practice religion uh, as part of Christianity. And the, the key sticking point for this particular group of these people called the Anabaptists, and this gave birth to the Amish, the Mennonites, and, uh, and I think that's it. Those are the two basic groups. But it's like, hey, like we, you know, as Catholics, you're a Catholic, I'm a Catholic, you get baptized as a little baby. Right, you just the priest dunks your head in the water, a little oil on you, some some prayers, and away you go. You're you're free of original sin, and you're now a, a member of the church. These people were like, hey, like that little baby shouldn't be making. That's like a decision somebody should make if they want to be a follower of Christ. So that's something that you really shouldn't be doing. You shouldn't be getting baptized until you're an adult. And I gotta say, makes some sense. So instead of like that was how you enter the church. So so we as Catholics, uh, I think we do like the uh, the confirmation, at least I did when I was like 15, 16 years old. And that's kind of uh, what that is for us. But they were like, nope, you're not a member of a church until you get baptized. And you shouldn't be doing that until you're an adult. OK, so that was kind of the history of it. And Anabaptist just means rebaptize essentially so it's it's a german language word uh and it comes from like that just means rebaptize and you just do it as an adult with your own free will so the amish so that was like the mennonites and this anabaptist movement the the actual amish sect uh didn't form until like a hundred 150 years later 1693 by this guy Jacob amen so you hear amish his name was amen um and he was basically like hey like we got these different groups of people in this anabaptist thing we got these groups of mennonites and then there was a group of people who was like the prominent mennonite group called the emmentalers emmentalers it might be pronouncing that incorrectly but basically 
he was like, they're not strict enough. Like these people are not strict enough for my liking. And their big thing was that if you have a quote unquote fallen believer that th- this group, the Emmon Taylors would say like, Hey, like you, you can't participate in uh, communion anymore. And that didn't go far enough for uh, Jacob Amen and his people. They're like, no, if you're, if you fuck up while you're in our group, you're just like shunned and you're no longer part of our group. You're not allowed to have communion. You're going to have certain meals like restricted from, from you. Like you just can't be a part of the community if you're fallen. Like you're, you're in it, but you're not really, and you're going to be punished for your misgivings. And so he took a hard line stance. He wanted a more conservative, more like lockdown, more rules. And, uh, and that's like where they split off. So now you have the Amish and the Mennonites, although they have like the same fundamental core beliefs, the way they set up their societies is going to be a little bit different. That, so, all right. That definitely makes sense. Yeah. And then that, you know, it was a precursor to like, they still live pretty strict lifestyles mm-hmm. because they're like, Hey, like we're the strict group of these Anabaptists. And then, you know, we say like, how do they get to America? Because I, I never even knew Amish existed in Europe until I started doing the research. But between 1717, so like before the United States was really formed, it was still the colonies, and 1750, you had roughly 500 Amish move into uh, Pennsylvania. Like they're very, you know, I think Lancaster is probably like the, the place where they're known most famously. But, you know, Pennsylvania and Ohio. And they moved there be, be basically because... I think the Quakers were already there. I think the Quakers came like the 1600s and it was Pennsylvania was known as a place with good farmland that you could get for cheap and that they just had religious freedom. It was like, Hey, the Quakers are over there doing their thing. They live, you know, outside of the norms where you got Ben Franklin like, running around with fucking prostitutes and things like that, but they're not going to come after you for being like this, you know, heavily Christian religious quasi cult i guess uh like i hate to use that word because these are people but they'll never fucking hear it so um but yeah so that was kind of the the uh the reason why they settled in pennsylvania is because pennsylvania had that reputation for having uh the greatest amount of religious freedom in combination with that cheap and good farmland that makes sense because i don't know if you saw this on twitter or not and this is i mean really neither here nor there but jeff to tweeted at me and was like hey if you need to know anything let me know i was like are you Amish? He's like, was, oh no, well, like he's he's a Pennsylvania guy. Yeah, so he so he's just in it. So he, I didn't, I don't think I got that tweet because I haven't sidled up with uh, the dude to do yet because I'm Team Rico. So I, I don't, but yeah, so I've had a few people being like, yeah, I'm a PA person. If you want to have, if you need, if you have any so questions, so the PA people like really, really know about it. I think they interact with them more. Like they just see yeah, them out yeah, in the yeah. wild. They have the Amish furniture, the butter. Like you want to, you know, all sorts of different things. But you're just gonna come into contact with them more if you're from Pennsylvania has the most I think Ohio is second and Indiana and Michigan might be like third and fourth but it's all kind of in that like eastern part of the the Big Ten we'll say where it's like that Rust Belt area but they they don't live obviously the Rust Belt lifestyle they're they're off in the in the country doing their thing fair enough Mm -hmm. fair that's what I expected yep so then 1675 the Amish are like, we're here in America, like we're on our own. Uh, we don't really know what to do or how to set up our community or what, like what rules to live by. So they, they wrote to their leaders who are still like setting up, the, you know, this is like a new sort of religion, a new way to be. And they wrote to their leaders in Germany being like, all right, like give us like guidelines to how to actually do this because they were so far like a satellite version of this or so far removed. And this is not like you pick up your phone. You have to like write a letter get out your fucking feather with uh, with a little bit of ink and send it off for months at a time. And they came back and they had this a German word called Orgnang. And this is like an, an un, unofficially unwritten set of rules of how to live their life. And that came from like the German leaders where they were, they were kind of doing it there. And like, this is how we're doing it. And that really uh, set the foundation of how we view Amish today. So they're like looking at the, like the, because if you can imagine, like they're yeah, like they're in a, a religious group, but they probably weren't living that differently from their neighbors in the 1700s. They only look like they have the different, like the plain clothing, and they're you know hyper religious and all that. But you know Thomas Jefferson's a farmer. Everybody's kind of like a farmer, right? This is pre-industrial revolution, so the way that you're living your life as an Amish person isn't that different from the rest of the population. 
but they just had it so uh, it was kind of like I don't know, canonized is not the word, but they were like this is like put into place like written written in stone. This is how we're gonna live. And that's why they haven't deviated with the rest of the population because their rules were written in like 1765 and they're like, these are our rules. So anything that comes after this, fuck it, we're out. These are our rules. So it would be like the people in the 70s refusing to take off the Led Zeppelin t-shirts basically to move into the 80s. Exactly, you're right. And people in the 80s going to the 90s, like I refuse to wear that starter jacket. Not wearing the starter jacket, I'm going to wear one glove on my hand like Michael Jackson. Yeah. Like I'm just going to live that way forever. And it was because this was like something, you know, that they saw as divine and and a way of life that was, you know, according to them, working for them at the time. And they're just like, we're, you know, you talk about people stuck in the times. They're literally stuck in 1765. I guess that makes sense, though. Mm-hmm. They just didn't want to keep going, but you're right. At yeah. the time, it was just like, hey, yep. they wear black and white. They go do horse and buggy. Yep. But they just, but as technology kept moving up and up, they're just like, nope, exactly. this is what we want. And, and that's become still like a core difference between them and the Mennonites, who, again, they branched off of that same Anabaptist thing, and the Mennonites have these kind of strict beliefs, too, but they are allowed to use technology. The Mennonites... Also, uh, they have modern clothing, and, and they kind of live like not quite the way the rest of the country works, but a lot closer to it than than the Amish do. God, I kind of love that. Can I say that off the, out of the gate? Uh-huh. I feel like in the world and in history, they should preserve like one neighborhood to never change. <laughs> well, I know what neighborhood you would be in. What's that? You would be in like 1958. With the music, yes. the, like lack of social media, Got your, ballrooms and shit, ballrooms like you're, you're watching maybe one game or two a week, but it's on like a small TV and you got six guys huddled around it, and then you're shooting dice and talking shit. Yes, like yes, that's, like you're you're 1958 at. God, there should be a gated community that I could just walk up to and it's like, here's 1988. Yeah, like here's that. Here's yeah. the 80s. We, I mean, we just need to found more religions. Like that's yeah, it. we need damn. we need an act of God. All right, I'm in on the Amish so okay, far. So far, Let's continue. Let's hold off. On All right, that. sorry, sorry. <laughs> it might I, become problematic at some point on this people. podcast. Um, and yeah, and, and that's why the Amish community is still so small too, because it's hard to live this lifestyle. Where the Mennonites have, I want to say they have like maybe eight hundred thousand people worldwide uh, in their in their community. I guess we'll call it, and they're in fifty one different countries. The Amish are only in North America, so they think they have some in there's some in like Ontario, um, but mostly in the United States. And it's a much smaller. I want to say there's still less than a hundred thousand. Uh, I could have that number wrong, but it's it's a much lower population, and it's because you know they lose quite a quite a bit, or at least a percentage, when they let people do the the rumspringa. Which is, you got a little smile on your face, like you're excited to talk about Rumspringer. Well, our guy, Danny here, at the social media, Dan, he like says I say it, Rumspringer, all the time. I feel like I don't. All right, my mic's off. His mic's off, but what were you going to say? Like what? Well, this weekend, he's like, sorry if I'm interrupting you during Rumspringer. Yeah, I said, yeah, so I texted people over break, but yeah. like, sorry to be like, hey, sorry for bugging you on the break. I don't know, I thought I'd throw in a little Rumspringer. Sorry to hit you up during Rumspringer, but hey, uh, we got shit to do tomorrow. I don't know. I think it's just a funny event. So, so sorry. Just continue with Rumspringa. So Rumspringa. I think that was pretty great. It sounds like a great time. Like we talked about um, the uh, Saturnalia at the last podcast yep. too, where it's just like it's a free for all. Rumspringa is a free for all too. So it's not like this, you know, a certain period of time. But it's basically a, it's more for like girls do it too, but it's more for boys. They said boys part like you have the option to participate in Rumspringa, and. You can do it as early as 16, and then you kind of just live like a regular teenager. You go fucking boozing. You um, you can use technology. You want to drive a car for a bit. If you can figure out a way to get a license, go nuts. Do that. You want to get on the internet. You want to jerk off the porn. All of that is fine. You want to use the internet, booze, drugs, whatever. It's fine. And you know why it's fine? Because they haven't been baptized yet because they're not an adult, uh. so they haven't made that choice. So you can do all the fun sins as long as you haven't been baptized. So if you don't want to be, if you go to Rumspring and be like, all that shit that I just listed is too awesome to give up, you don't have to be baptized. You can't live in the community. Um, and they said a lot of the people who come back from Rumspring and don't want to be Amish, they actually just become Mennonites because it's like sort of familiar, but a little bit more freedom and a little bit more like like you can live like a normal life. Um, but... but if you do come back, 
but and then you can still I'm sorry so you can still talk to your family so like hey like I can't be all in on this lifestyle it's not for me I'm not going to be baptized in the Amish church and people will be like all right that's fine that's your choice like you might disappoint people but you can still go back and have Christmas you can you know communicate with them all that like you're not ostracized from the community if you come back and get baptized and then get caught doing that kind of stuff afterwards you're fucked like you are fucked you can't you, even join the Mennonites you might be able to leave the community at that point. It's yeah. like sometimes they kick you out and you'll be able to go and like, you know, but you can't come back. Like if your dad is dying of cancer and you hear about it and he's having, uh, and you got, you know, kicked out, ostracized from the community because of your actions, which is like, I don't know, you went on the internet or something, then, you, then you're just like, you, you can't have communication with people in the community. So once you're in, you're in. And if you waver on that, then you're out and they either out completely or if you, depending on the severity of the rule that you break, you're shunned. So have you seen The Office, right? Yeah. So they have the scene where like Dwight is from, like uh, Dwight Schrute's from- Schrute Farms. Schrute Farms in Pennsylvania, Scranton, Pennsylvania. So he's kind of based on uh, the Amish like lifestyle and he's like shunning Andy Bernard. Well, they will literally do that where it's like, you're shunned if you have a business, uh, nobody can buy things from you. You can't buy things from other people. So it becomes like this big fi- Damn. financial burden. Uh, and you really are like, you're punished. So it's, it's picture like you are you have to eat alone. You like, you can't like be, you, can, you have to sit alone in church. For how long? I, I think it depends on the severity of like, so, I think sometimes it might just be for life. Holy shit. So it depends on the severity of the things that you did and like what the, what the individual community, because all of that, like they have votes and stuff. Uh, do we know how long you could take the rumspringa up until I didn't see a definitive answer for that uh, I can try to google it how long and then how long does the rumspringa take place is that like a two week thing I think it's longer than that so it's about two years so think of it as oh it, damn yeah so That's it's like you get a sweet. real taste of living a modern life damn. it's almost like when you have the um, the Mormons go off and do a mission but the opposite so it's like I'm not doing a mission to spread the faith. I'm actually seeing what the, all the sinners are up to, and then you make your decision after two years uh, if you want to come back and be baptized. Can I be honest? And I listen. I know it's not problematic yet, but right now I'm still in. I think I got more reasons to get you in too. Really? Like, dude, like they're giving them the option. Like, hey, mm-hmm. here's what the other side of the token is. We're not keeping you captive. Okay. So let me let me see if I don't like captivity. Obviously, right. You want your home body. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So you're going to be around. But they a couple other like weird things about it is there's no real music allowed by the Amish. So you love like your your 1950s music. You want to put a little bit of that on there. Uh, not allowed. So they have a book. Uh, it's a hymn book. So they sing in their church. The other thing is they don't even really have a church. So the way that they do church is that it kind of rotates around between uh, various members of the community's house or like their barn and everybody just goes there every Sunday. So that's, it's, they don't have like a place, like a designated place of worship in their community. They just bring everybody over their house. And the other thing I thought was interesting is that, you know how we have priests and other religions have like their leaders, you know how they choose their religious leaders? How? Oh. They basically draw straws. So you get all <laughs> the men together and you, you pull out a straw and whoever like is chosen, whoever has the straw that means like you're the fucking guy, it's because they're like all God chosen. So they just leave fade up to God of who's going to lead our community and our church here. So that's kind of how they do that. I thought that was kind of interesting too. Do they want to be the leader? I don't, they don't have a choice. Yeah. So if you like, are, if you're just in this thing where you're perpetually scared of public speaking but you've been chosen by god you're the guy you're the guy and it's supposed to be a position for life so you could just be like hey i guess i'm the leader of this church now wow yeah and it's just your pocket like so there's land you know if you're in ohio indiana like different towns in pennsylvania and if you can imagine if you're going around by horse and buggy you don't have a lot of communication with the other amish towns so it's like you're the guy for for life in that town. town yeah yeah so I do think they can they will rotate around on occasion, but for the most part, it's just in somebody's house. But back to the no music thing, I thought this was interesting. So they have a hymn book where they have these songs. There's not one musical note written anywhere in that hymn book. So while they're singing, all the tunes and stuff is just passed down like orally. So they've been doing this religion for 350 years. Nobody knows like how the first music started there, the first like the tunes. Um, and there are no instruments allowed either because instruments would allow someone to have self-expression, 
was just like, oh, I'm going to play this guitar however I want, this violin however I want. No, fuck you. If you have a voice, that's your only instrument. And uh, they, you know, they're saying that if you have self-expression, that'll lead to pride. And pride is one of the deadly sins. Instruments are out. You're going to sing this one hymn book the way that your mom told you, your dad told you how to do it, the way that their dad told them, and so on and so on. And that's how, that's how they do it. All right. So we're slipping here. Slipping a little bit. Yeah. In terms of toys, you like being a kid, right? Like oh, yeah. Like Christmas morning, get those toys, Vortex, whatever. They have, they don't really have a lot of that. They have like the fucking stick and wheel thing where you just hit a, like you just roll a wooden wheel down with a stick. They also have dolls. Okay. But these dolls are faceless. So they have no, like they're just these white things that kind of dress like an Amish uh, woman or man, but they have no features. And that's intentional because it's supposed to be like a symbol that. Uh, everyone is equal in the eyes of God, so it doesn't matter what your face looks like, so don't worry about having a face on a doll. Um, and it's also because individualism is considered a sin. Same thing as before. If you want to have self-expression, you're, you're not supposed to be in the Amish. Um, and then there's also things in Deuteronomy saying that, which is a book in the Old Testament, saying no likeness, no likeness of anything on earth or in heaven. So like you're just not supposed to like create these quote unquote false idols that you're going to like play with or theoretically worship because there's only God and we're not even supposed to draw them or make sculptures of them or anything. Yeah. Like they don't want Barbie. No Barbie. Yeah. They don't even want like statues of Jesus. So like, you know, we have like the crucifix on Jesus on the cross. Like they're not about that either. So they just don't want any, any artistic representation of anything, humans, gods, anything that's just not allowed. Okay. Um, and same that, and the same thing goes, that's why they don't have pictures. So, like, you can take a picture of an Amish person. You're supposed to ask them for their permission. Like, if you're on this, like, a tourist thing through, you know, Dutch Pennsylvania or whatever, you can take their picture, but they will never pose. So, you just have to, everything is candid with them, and you're supposed to, like, take pictures of them so their face is not showing. And if you were to enter an Amish person's home, you'll find no pictures of people anywhere. because And, and really no pictures of anything because that's, again, that's, like, another sign of, like, you know, you care about the way you look and like you're you're just not supposed to do that. I feel like they probably hate that classic picture. I know it's on the cover of Tim Allen and Kirstie Alley's For Richer or Poor. I don't know if you've seen that. I think I know what you're Yeah, it's with the guy about. with the pitchfork. Like they recreated it. Yeah. It's like a classic picture. They probably hate that. They, like, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. People for sure. definitely assume Amish when you see that. When they At see least that I picture. Did. Yeah. Old, old English stuff. And, um, so that's definitely that's definitely part of it too, and they just uh, and that's just why they don't they don't do that. And they and then the, I was looking at like why do these people like, hate technology so much? Like is that is that a sin to them? And they actually say no. So that it's the the lack of technology is not about like they think it's evil per se. They just want to preserve their way of life. So they think like having mass media or really any sort of like electronics. It just connects them to the like the larger community so they'll have like propane powered things on occasion you'll be able to find uh buggies like horse and buggies that have solar panels on them believe it or not so they'll have like some kind of electronics on their on their actual horse and buggy but they'll never have like a power grid coming from the town like the way that we flip on the lights they don't want anything to do with that so they're they want to just preserve their way of life they will like kind of skirt the edges of that rule a little bit and find little loopholes, but they just don't want to be on the grid and they don't want to have any t form of like public water or public utility or anything that makes them connected to the rest of the population because I believe part of it is both to preserve their community, but then they also want like relig religious exemptions from taxes and stuff. So if you're not using any of their community, like the state of Pennsylvania's resources, then that kind of helps your cause. So that's part of it. Damn. So what's like, I know there's a big thing for obviously people here listening in Chicago or Illinois. There's like an Amish stop a little past U of I, mm -hmm. between U of I and Eastern and Southern. Yep. And they're like, supposedly there's like great fried chicken, but I know it closes at like one or one or 2 p.m. Like they're, they're probably out of their stuff. That's it? Probably, I would assume. Yeah, or like, I don't know if there's like a certain time they can't work past or whatever, or like a daylight, sunlight thing. I don't it know, might, but... It might be a daylight thing. Yeah, like you see like Amish fireplaces and shit. Like mm -hmm. they like have somehow coined like these unique things as being like... And I think people say they're good. Yeah. Like I they think, create good products. Yeah, and I, you know, well, it's all handmade. 
So it's it's good craftsmanship, and it's been you know these tools and traits and, and ways of making. Like I know like their their furniture is supposed to be great, and that kind of gets into the next thing I want to talk about is that they have way lower rates of cancer, heart disease, diabetes, obesity, and it's because they're living how things were 300 years ago, and which that translates to no processed food, very little sugar in your diet. Uh, they have some alcohol, but not really. And that's more of like a rum springer thing and teenage thing. Like there's people who would like have arrest records from doing drunk driving with a horse and buggy. That's like a real thing. And, but they, they just aren't a part of that traditional American diet. So they're not impacted on the, on the health front, the way that most Americans are. Now they do have some of their own health problems, meaning, um, and this is like kind of a difficult thing to talk about. At least for me, I thought, I don't know, but they, they just have a shallow gene pool because you have so few people living in these communities and it's very hard to like meet people in outside communities. And they've been trying to do that more recently, but you, if you're living in one of these Amish communities, there's a good chance that your wife is like your third or fourth cousin or less. So when you have like a shallow gene pool, you have like a lot of genetic disorders and birth defects and there's like a higher rates of like deafness and things like that. That just, that just common in any community where there's a lot of, you know, quote unquote inbreeding. So that is like a problem that the Amish are dealing with, but so they do have health problems, but they don't have the same t- sort of health problems that we have. And everybody's like more lean because they're building houses and working and building furniture and just doing these activities, farming, plowing fields, fucking shit like that, that they just, they're just naturally more active than, um, than like you're like you and I sitting at a desk talking to a microphone or typing on a computer and stuff. Yeah. It makes sense. Pick your poison in a mm-hmm. sense though. Yeah. So what do you think? Are you still interested in this? Because I, I I have like the checklist for if you want to become Amish, you can convert. You want to hear it? Uh, Yeah, I do want to hear it, of course. But so but you're wavering. Yeah, I'm wavering. I'm starting to starting to lose hope here. So you have to live in the community for a year. And most people will most of these communities will have a family that will host you. But you are going to you're going to be in the community. So if you're like you're like trying it out. And you go to church every Sunday. You do have to kind of like sit by yourself. Like you're not like you can't take the communion or do anything like that. But you can you have to live in the community every year and go to church every Sunday for a year. You have to get a job. So it'll be one of those guys churning butter or making furniture or making furniture or whatever. But you have to do that for a year. You have to find work. You have to learn Pennsylvania Dutch, which is its own language. And it has its roots in Germany and not Dutch. But that you have to be able to learn that language. That is their first language. So their kids when they're like toddlers and shit, they grow up learning Pennsylvania Dutch and they don't learn English until they go to school. So they start going to school first grade like everybody else and that's when they start teaching them English, but they have their own language that's really only spoken. Uh, It's similar to German, but it's really only spoken in these communities as far as I could read. Um, And then you have to kind of be sponsored and then you have to choose your, uh, you have to be baptized and then you can live in the community. Should you want to convert, if you want a simpler lifestyle, it's it's there for you, Ed. Dude. I mean, that's, uh, I don't know. I think I'm out. You're out. Okay. Yeah. And that was before I got to most of the bad stuff, too. Oh, no. So they're famous for having- uh, Who the fuck speaks Pennsylvania Dutch? Just the Amish. I don't want to learn. I mean, I would like to learn another language, but one, one that that's more can, useful, yeah, you know? The one that you, you can actually speak to someone. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. So you're not learning Latin. I'm not completely out though yet. Give me to the real bad stuff. Yeah. Um, So the real bad stuff, you know, they have they have a difficult time making money, right? So one of the things that they've adopted in the last 20 years or so, maybe a little bit longer than that, is they have a lot of puppy mills. So they'll if you want a French bulldog, they're they're very expensive. You want a purebred lab, they're very expensive, and they just like churn out these puppies. So that's very prevalent in Ohio, especially, and then Western Pennsylvania. They have a lot of puppy mills. But this is what I don't understand. Okay, mm-hmm. how are they knowing the rate on these things? Someone's checking fucking Craigslist. They will actually have puppy auctions. So they will invite. They'll go to like these different places in the community. They go to state fairs, to county fairs, things like that, with their best breeding dogs, and hold these auctions. But like they're they're putting these puppy mills are bad because it's just like you're artificially inseminating these female dogs forever, like until they just can't produce anymore. But they'll have like, you know, 40, 50, 60 puppies, something like that, and then die. 
and they're that's just kind of how they're using them and they're using those puppies to you know support other things in their community so they do a lot of puppy mill action uh, i told you about the shunning thing where they just completely isolate people it is a very patriarchal society meaning like women have almost no rights so they can never be like a leader in the community uh, their religious doctrine says that, you know, they have that head covering uh, and they have to wear all the same clothes, stuff like that. And they have to be like subservient to their husbands. Like whatever their husband says is the law. And because of that, you've had people leave the community who will then go out and like tell the story that there's like a, a lot of uh, physical and mental abuse that goes on in these communities. And uh, you can't really prosecute them because a, there aren't like police just going up and down you know, these Amish communities that kind of handle it internally. Um, but it doesn't, you know, necessarily, it's kind of like, it, I like frowned upon, but not like illegal to have these like domestic violence issues. So, and then they, they, they will just, depending on the severity, it's like, okay, like you're going to be shunned for a while. You're going to have this punishment in the community because you did this. Or sometimes it's just like, Hey, like, no, like your husband was justified in beating you. So like, that's, that's like a tough one. Very um, tough. Yeah. And then I think, uh, yeah, I think that would be, that would be it. Like they really just treat their women like second class citizens and, uh, the puppy mills and, you know, some of these genetic disorders. So it's not, doesn't seem like a great way of life, but they've been doing it for, you know, 350, 400 years. So have someone tried to cancel them yet or no, I'm sure. Is that like a charge? I mean, I'm just, but like, so they've been not canceled, but they've had, um, instances where the government's gotten involved like the the epa the environmental protection agency where they don't really have any fencing or or great fencing for their livestock so they they test like the drinking water um and some of the other like the water that feeds to the greater pennsylvania community and they test positively for things like e coli and the, these other viruses and it's because of some they say because of the way that some of the amish do their farming where you'll have cows taking a shit in the river and the river flows downstream to like a you know a, a modern community and they have to deal with you know the runoff um you know bile and waste that are produced from the amish community because they just don't have any of the technology to treat their water do things differently so they've been canceled on that front but like the government has like imposed some some sanctions and some guidelines on how they you can't just live however you want you have to follow these rules because you're damaging other people outside your community but it's not like uh i don't think they've been canceled for the abuse i feel like we need like a netflix doc to raise awareness to uh to do that but as of right now everything is you know still people are just kind of look the other way like oh that's them they're doing their thing damn well no i don't want to be amish yeah and all the clothes. Like, you can't have, like, your clothes all have to be the exact same. Gets fucking hot. Wool in the summer? <sighs> Multiple layers? No no thanks. I'm a sweaty guy. I would have a hard time in the Amish community. Be fucking hot. For a variety for sure. of That would probably be the number one thing for me. Like, I just Too can't. sweaty? Too sweaty. The starch in the shirts. Like, yeah. I just can't do it. Yeah, I hear you. Yeah. All right. Is that about it with the Amish? I think that's all yeah. I got. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, I'm telling you, I, I would definitely like to, like, st- I, I would love to have one on who's on Rumspringa. Like, that would be super interesting. <laughs> or or someone who just never went back. Yeah, that'd yeah. be great. If you're mm-hmm. out there, like, we'd love to talk to you. Yep. Hit us Answer up. some DMs more questions. Open. Yeah. DM, uh, DM social media Danny. Maybe he'll find it. Yeah, Dog Walk Barstool. Hit it up. Yeah. Um, thank you, Chief. Anytime. Uh, yeah, very, very interesting stuff. So uh, that's it for today, everybody. Uh, we'll be back tomorrow. We'll see you then.